last Christmas was the first time that my family spent it without my brother. My brother Andrew committed suicide about nine months ago. His bipolar disorder manifested in a lot of different ways. Anger, depression, he would push us away. At times it felt very difficult growing up to feel seen and to feel heard. And even into my adulthood, I didn't know how to separate my brother's mental illness from him. And over time, I found that I had developed a lot of resentment because the truth is, it's been years since I went home to see my family at Christmas time. And when I got home for Christmas, my dad hugged me so tightly and he started crying. And I could feel the intensity of love and desperation that he had in hugging me, knowing that I was one of his two only sons that he had left. And over Christmas, we had a really amazing time. I could feel the space that each of us in that family held. Because we were all together celebrating the holidays and also celebrating the life of my brother. All of his different personality traits and characteristics, each one of us have some of that. And he lives on through us. Uh -huh. Humble. He was the most humble person I know. He was very humble. He was a very humble person. And he kind of grumpy. And he never yeah, he was kind of grumpy. Now who of us does he get that personality? Who else is like that? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not grumpy. I'm not grumpy. I'm not grumpy. He was in the worst shape that he was ever yeah. in his life. He yeah. decorated, he did, for last last Christmas, he decorated outside. He hung he was in snowflakes. He was in bad shape the last year. And he was but, saying goodbye for a long yeah. time. Yeah, he was. The last two years were goodbyes. And I, I kick myself, but it's okay, that I didn't get it. I didn't believe that he was ever really going to leave. I just, and I, but you know what? Andrew always challenged me on my thinking and stuff, and he has sent us on our great, he's on his greatest adventure, and he sent us on an adventure as well. But there's something for me that's like actually really peaceful tonight. And I think like there's a peace that he is at peace that we can't deny, that's real. But there was this moment when we were at home and I was watching home movies with my mom. And there is this video of my brother and I wrestling with my dad. And in that video, I could see Andrew. I could see the Andrew that I started to miss as his mental illness got worse. And the video brought me so much joy because I felt like I could see him again. I experienced this wave of compassion For all the energy that my parents gave towards my brother who was sick. And it started to make sense because I see now that I was capable of taking care of myself when my brother wasn't. That it had nothing to do with whether my parents loved me less or not. And if I have any regret, it's that I wish that I had a deeper level of compassion and understanding for my brother's mental illness. Because I think maybe I would have visited more.
so each day I'm choosing to ask myself how can I make amends to myself for the time that I feel lost with my family and my brother and each day I ask God to reveal something to me to help me with that when I wake up in the morning His artwork is on my wall. It's throughout my apartment. And in that, I feel like I get to honor whatever time that I didn't have with him. And I get to honor the parts of him that were untouched by his illness. Because mental illness is not a moral issue. And the saddest, most tragic part of it is that it affects an entire family in the aftermath of suicide. Every single person and every member of that family is left wondering who they are now. What place do they serve in their family? And when I went home for Christmas, what was revealed to me was that there was always space for us. We always had room for each other and that we were all doing the absolute best that we could, including my brother, Andrew.